I'm only 40% done, okay. I don't know if that can... Okay, that doesn't count all the... Uh, that counts all the objective... Uh, it doesn't count all the default objectives, like every extra objective as well, I think. I think I'm supposed to call Scotland Yard. Right? Call Scotland Yard, okay. Where's the phone? That's not a phone. I don't know where the phone is. Um, probably at the desk over here. Is this the phone right here? Oh. This is clues for some reason. Excellency. Hastings photo. I was looking for a phone though. That doesn't really help. I don't know where the phone is at. I guess I'll look around. That's looking at myself, gotcha. Yes. <laughs> Miss Haste, Hastings tore the envelope. Where's the phone at though? I lock my revolver in this drawer. I've not used it in a very long time. Poor Mr. Poirot. Poor Mr. Poirot, not so good at this. How do I check them now? Hmm. Yeah, where, where's the phone at? My dude. I don't know where the phone's at. Aha, found the phone. Hello, chap. We received the new. Where and when? In Cheston. Today. Today? I'll inform the population immediately. I'll check the train times. Call me back. It's really weird that they didn't get the right address, though. They got it right the last two times, so... Hmm. Curious, indeed. Huh, what the hell? Scare the shit out of me, my dude. Hastings, what? Heavens! Hastings. Okay. <laughs> All the same, it really is a disgrace to leave your belongings in such a mess. That is really... <laughs> Voila! There we go. It only took a minute. I mean, it took more than a minute. But yeah, Poirot, that long. you were right. I've just consulted the ABC guide. There's no hurry. The next train doesn't leave till 11:45. You see, there is no need to hurry. We will not be in Charleston until tomorrow morning. After the murder. But why has the murderer warned us so late? It's not what he usually does. Did he do it on purpose? Very good question, Hastings. We should also compare the letter we have just received with the other two. Although I have very little doubt about what we will find. Right, let us compare this new letter with the second one. Let us examine this more closely. 
certain characters in the two letters may have similar defects. Yes, this eye is weird. Yes, the eye characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Hmm, the W is not printed properly. Of course, the W characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Yeah, it's the A. I don't know why we're doing this again. I could have just clicked in yes, on this one. Yes, the A? Whatever. That's right. The... Yeah. My theory was right. The... Let us now try and get our brand... The letter should have arrived in time. The postmark shows that it was sent three days ago. However, our man made a mistake in the address, which explains the delay. All the same, the post office took their time correcting the error. Come on, Poirot. Your address is not quite as well known as that of Scotland Yard. Yes, but he's already sent two letters. He should know the address. Poirot, the telephone. Know. It must be Jap. I don't know what you want me to say, but he should have known the address. I don't how you know the address there's gotta be something up my theory was something is wrong i have some news from churchton bad news i'm afraid sir carmichael clark was murdered while out on his evening walk sir carmichael clark the name is familiar to me he was a famous throat specialist one of the best in london a wealthy man he retired to combside a beautiful house by the sea he collected antiques are you going there Yes, let's meet on the train. Okay, right, so there was a third murder. Well, shit. That's not good. Oh, shit. The victim is called Sir Carmichael Clark, one of the best throat specialists in London. The body was still warm when we found it. If we had been warned earlier, we definitely could have saved him. It appears that the murderer made a mistake when he wrote his letter. A mistake? Lucky for him. And what if he did it on purpose? No, no. He's defined his madcap rules and he's sticking to them. It's a matter of pride for him. Shall we go up to the house, Poirot? You go, my friends. I will come soon. Marshal Moustache. 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 Marvel Moustache. ABC murderer. Oh. An ABC guide. The murderer's customary signature. Covered in blood this time. The first time it's been covered in blood, though. Sir Carmichael's throat was cut. It's a clean incision, a professional murder. Apart from the wound to the throat, the body is untouched. No cuts, no bruises. This is the, same right the gravel on the path has been sprayed with blood that covers a conical-shaped area, which starts at the body and becomes wider as it moves further from the bush. Jap has emptied the victim's pockets and has laid out their contents on this piece. It is pointless. An oriental dragon. It's an old piece, much older than the pocket watch on which it was fastened.
That is wild, right? Ooh, let's take the money. Nothing appears to be missing from. No, there's some money missing because they took it. Wink, 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 you know. A signet ring, very probably with the Clark family's coat of arms. This place is very calming. There's a bird, there's a rabbit hole. The site is exceptional. It is easy to imagine that Sir Carmichael used to enter stopping here every evening. Here, apparently. The body is just in front of a bush. One of the only bushes in the surrounding area. Area. The fuck? <laughs> area. Can I go over this way? Is that it? Which way do I go? If we can, I guess. The vegetation behind the bush has been trampled. Let us now try and get our brain cells to oh, work. Sir Carmichael had his back to the bush when the killer cut the throat from behind. A fatal blow that sprayed blood of a range of more than one meter. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Have you finished, Poirot? Chief Inspector, many questions remain unanswered, but I am certain of one thing. The killer has prepared his crime very carefully. Quite right. He must have known Sir Carmichael's movements well to plan such an attack. The murderer struck with terrible savagery. Yes, blood flowed. It's the first time he's attacked a man. He armed himself accordingly. Have you spoken to the victim's family, Chief Inspector? I've spoken to the brother, Franklin Clark. I didn't get much out of him. He's yours. I must get the body removed. <clears throat> I guess I'll go back this way. There you go. points for acting the same way as Hercule Poirot. Hercule Poirot. To be honest, this inspector seems rather obtuse. I'm counting on your friend Poirot to catch my brother's murderer. Ah, here he is now. Please, Mr. Poirot. Mr. Poirot, this is my brother's secretary, Miss Thora Gray. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Poirot. Would you like some tea? No, thank you, mademoiselle. Did you kill him? I find it hard to digest. Are you the murderer? There is something elegant about her. She has a nice brooch. She has good taste, except perhaps in her choice of jewelry. Oh, why are you just Please excuse jewelry? me, I have to take care of Lady Clark. Wait, so I can't ask her questions then? It is not the right. It is a once in a lifetime opportunity to question him. Hastings does not. My brother's wife is gravely ill. You will probably want to question her, but 
I fear that it won't be possible today. I insist, Mr. Clark. Please allow me to remind you that this is a murder inquiry. Unfortunately, she is much too ill. She doesn't even know her husband is dead. I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid it's out of the question. Of course, I understand. Someone set a <clears throat> trap for your brother. Who was familiar with his habits? Everybody knew he took his evening walk at half past eight, and that he always followed the same path. Was it a dark night? It was a new moon. I took a lantern. So it was you who found the body? Yes, along with the gardener. Have you seen any strangers around the house recently? No. As far as I know, nobody has been near the house. Hmm. Something doesn't add up. Oh, Lady Clark must have fallen from her chair. I have to help Miss Grey get her up. Hastings, while our host is gone, let's examine the drawing room. But, Poirot, a gentleman shouldn't... I take full responsibility. All you have to do is to leave the drawing room door ajar and let me know if anyone is coming. A tiger. Dragon. Oops. It is an emperor. His place at the center of the. T A turtle. Home besides private collection purchases since 1920. Home besides private collection purchases since 1920. Or he can read it to okay. The catalog okay. for Sir Carmichael Clark's collection. We're we not going to look inside of it. Okay. A crane. Hmm. A dragon. Turtle, the dragon, the crane, and the tiger. I think I've already seen this motif somewhere. Kind of like, oh, I have to turn around to be in the right position. And I have to turn, really? Okay. Okay, let me have a look then. What does this do? Oh, I need the color too? Damn, dude. Okay. So let me go check. The cardinal points. This book could maybe help me. Okay, so there's the Each colors. cardinal point is associated with one animal and one color. In the middle sits the impale dragon, and out of respect, all the others are turned towards him. All the others are turned towards him. Okay. I just gotta find out which side they're on, because I do not remember. So this is gonna be blue. I'm gonna change the color again. I, oh, right, this thing. So that's gonna be blue. What is this? Oh, okay, I see. Okay, so there's the colors. I just gotta go out. I can't go out apparently? Okay. Well, they have to be faced towards him, right? So let's face them all towards him. Oops. Um. 
composition of each motif resembles that of those on the table. I think I heard a bang. Could it be this cupboard? This is interesting. Ooh, knives. And there's one missing. Okay. Ernest Luggan, MD Brighton Cancer Institute, 201 Dusk Road, Brighton, Sussex. To Sir Carmichael Clark, MD Comside, Churston, Devon. Brighton, 1935, January the 5th. As a man of science, I owe it to you to be completely frank. Lady Clark, your wife is suffering from a generalized terminal cancer. Oh, I confess I didn't suspect anything like that during the first exams. But with the test results I have received today, there is unfortunately no place for doubt. That's not good. I estimate that Lady Clark's life expectancy is no more than one year. Hospitalization would not help in her case. So I advise you to keep her at home and provide her with as much morphine as required to ease her last moments. Yours sincerely, <clears throat> Ernest Logan. That's not good. These daggers are only ceremonial weapons. I do not think that the crime weapon is here. It does one missing. But okay. Here's Miss Gray. Sorry to keep you waiting. Lady Clark's condition requires regular care. I believe you want to ask me a few questions. Indeed, mademoiselle. Yeah, sort the foot down. This post It's about three centuries old, I believe. Wait. Samurai mustache. Question, yeah. Just a minute, please, Mr. Poirot. What? Am I supposed to look at her now? Is something different? She appears to be very flustered. Oh, that's not good. She's unable to hide her emotion, and her makeup has been disturbed. I think that this young woman has just been kissed. Here? Teapot with Black Dragon, Gangshi period, end of the 17th century. It is a rare piece with unusual colors. You have a good knowledge of art history. Acquired while working with Sir Carmichael. I used to help him manage his collection and choose his new acquisitions. I didn't do anything. How did I just get another achievement? Wait, what? Okay. Did you have a good relationship with your employer? He treated me well, and I am sorry for his death. Have you seen any strangers hanging around in the past few days? No. Nobody has been near Comside. Tell me what happened last night. After dinner? Well, I did some sewing and then I went to bed. I was woken by the telephone at 11. I heard Franklin Clark speaking with the gardener. They left with them lanterns and they found the body. Am I right thinking that something is going on between you and Franklin? How dare you ask me such a question? And you? How do you dare kiss your good friend in the house of a dead man? Mr. Poirot, you are behaving despicably. Whatever, lady. You know what? <laughs> I didn't go too well, but whatever. Miss Gray, if I may be so bold, please do not take offense. My friend has rather unusual methods, but all he wants is to find the murderer. Yes, I understand. I must rest. Please excuse me. Earlier, you question. asked me to watch the living room door for you. I don't wish to be indiscreet, but sometimes a gentleman stumbles upon a secret without intending to. That is sometimes the case. And I saw Franklin Clark 
kissing Miss Gray at the foot of the stairs. Exactly. Do you think this is a common occurrence? No, I saw emotion, intensity. I think it was their first oh, kiss. Oh shit, I'm sorry. Well done, mon ami. Well, now I well kind of feel like a dick, but okay. However, I don't think I completely understand this business. Why did Sir Carmichael not defend himself? He appeared to have been active and strong. The murderer did not give him a chance. Let us try and reconstruct the scene. I kind of feel bad now. She just accused her of kissing the guy. But apparently it was the first kiss. Yeah. Is Sir Clark one? is taking his customary walk. Our killer is hiding behind a bush. The old man walks quietly along the gravel path. Then he turns towards the sea to gaze at it. I shall um, probably from the left. I'm attacking the right. The killer leaves his hiding place on the right hand side. He approaches silently over the grass. Then he throws himself on his prey and cuts the poor man's throat. He then lays down the ABC before leaving. Hey, the page isn't turning, that's wrong. Everything appears to match the crime scene, Moshe Hastings. <clears throat> that is exactly what happened. Cupid boat was that? What the fuck? So he's got blood on his chest. I think that's a bad sign. Oh, just a minute. I'm getting dressed. Mr. Kirst, have you recently returned from Churston? Uh, yes, yes, indeed I have. Have you seen the papers? And to think that you might have rubbed shoulders with the killer! Imagine that! Mr. Kirst, are you alright? You don't seem well. My apologies, my throat is burning and my head feels heavy. It's ever since the war, you know. Since my injury, my head has never been the same. That's not good. Poirot, it's a pleasure to be with you again after all these years. I looked for a gift to thank you, and I found this propelling pencil. An authentic collector's item. You spoil me, mon ami. And you more so by sharing investigations. Do not underestimate the help you are to me, Estings. Intellect is not everything. There is also goodwill, and you are not short of that. Later, I will ask you to help me tidy up the room and bring some chairs. Our guest will be here soon. Ah, is Thora Grey coming? Naturally. She is a fascinating young woman, n'est-ce pas? Oh, come on, Poirot. I'm a married man. And Miss Grey has already been courted by Franklin Clark. Poirot, our guests will be here soon. We must prepare ourselves. I should take advantage of the silence to examine them. Mm. Okay. I'm gonna stop it here. It's gonna be murder number three, apparently. We're about to get into all of the all the victims over here. It's gonna be very interesting. So I'll be back later.